Uh, so first of all, it's a real privilege to be here today with so many of you from around the world. Uh, you know, the times that I've, I've done this uh, on this program, I've, been, I've walked away so impressed with the energy, with the excitement, with the curiosity and the kind of life experiences that you have already in your young lives have already brought to the table. And I'm hoping that this will be in the next 15 minutes will be an informal kind of like fireside chat. We're going to be talking about uh, careers in business and what, you know, what are what, and, and my hope is that you might uh, begin to think about this area as one potential opportunity area. So, because if, if you, for example, you have interests in fashion or you have interests in uh, engineering or you have interest in with numbers, working with numbers somehow, all these different areas have business, um, you know, terrain that they're embedded in. And so there's always, you know, like, so, so I've had uh, young ladies that are very interested in fashion or modeling or whatever. Well, that is a, um, a $26 billion business. And now you may be thinking about the kind of the high gloss, um, kind of market facing areas like modeling or or being a fashion designer or merchandiser but but there are a lot of jobs behind those that are in the business ecosystem but there but um you don't necessarily see them right away you know so what i'd like to do is um first lay out two major areas that most business is in and then we'll um and, and look at some examples and then ask you um you know what amongst that might be of interest um what is your interest and how that might be related or not you know and sometimes this is important from a career standpoint to know what you definitely don't want to do uh which can help to start to learn what do you want to do you know so you, you can take it from either either way does this uh uh does this make sense to you uh Federico? Can we, can we start with that kind of approach that I'll look at two major business buckets, explore um, what's behind that with some examples, and then ask what some of uh, what some of your interests are and what questions you have. So um, in the whole career area in business, there's two major buckets. So one is market facing and the other is operationally facing. Um, and the market facing are all those different um, jobs and career opportunities that touch either a customer, a supplier, uh, um, different kinds of employers. Uh, so that's all like market facing. So an example of that is uh, a sales job. Um, so we know, you know, that's most direct uh, in between representing the company company and a product with uh, with a customer and so and then there's different kinds of sales there's uh, product sales there's um, uh, there's services sales so say you know we have someone that might be really interested in healthcare and um, they may have like we've had folks that have gone to medical school and they come out and they're really interested in the tech medical technology like some surgical um kind of of product and as they get more into it they're really interested more in how people will use the tech the medical technology and they end up being sales support they they help the sales rep who hasn't gone to medical school to um, learn how to more in a detailed way describe that that medical dev or medical device technology, so so there are you know people that may have gone to engineering school or to medical school or to you know these other kinds of schools and colleges, but they blend their their career interests. Um, so for example, someone who uh, is interested in education. Well, the first kind of market facing job you would think of is a, a, like a, a public school teacher. But there are all kinds of other kinds of educational opportunities. So for example, I was a, 
a chief learning officer and uh, which is you know about how do you how do you manage educational experiences usually at an adult level and in a commercial space so you're you're still you know or you could be a commercial trainer so that is an educator there's a lot of times public school teachers that have become trainers for companies and they teach uh product sales training or they teach um how to how to manage teams or relationships and so on um, what is common about all those kinds of teaching jobs in a very non-traditional non-public school setting is that they've been exposed to learning methodology they've been exposed to curriculum planning to how to how to get translate the complex into simple ideas so so anyway so you can take a basic job and see that it can have its um, tentacles going out also in the business world, just like, um, so, so um, that's just something to keep in mind. So market facing, you know, you can think about jobs like uh, uh, not just sales, but marketing folks. Um, so like John, Scu uh, John Scully and uh, Stephen Jobs, Stephen Jobs, uh, who, as you may know, was really a famous guy uh that created a company called apple um he you know steve jobs was really the face of the product he was really the sales rep um he didn't know a lot about the technology itself he knew it just enough to be able to talk about it in general but there were technologists behind him that helped him in his selling or his promoting or his public relations and so those are all other kinds of business jobs like so a PR. Uh, so if you like to write, if you're if you enjoy English, um, you might enjoy a professional communicators job where you're uh, working in the marketplace representing a company, a product or a service. Um, you might also be um, I, I've I've run across uh writers that are speech writers uh for executives um and so they create the speeches um my wife is a journalist that has was at one time a speech writer for a major american city mayor big city mayor um so she you know she had thought that she might want to be an english professor and ended up being a speech writer um in government uh and then she ended up later being speechwriter in healthcare for the ceo and for his executive team so she was in business she never thought of herself as being a business person but she ended up having a business job using her writing skills okay and she was thinking well i just like english um you know so there is this whole ecosystem within each of these career interest areas that um can be very opportunistic and and so and oftentimes if you're working say most people think about working for about 40 years of their life so that's roughly from 25 to 65 uh, that roughly uh so you, you know you get out of college uh at least an american college you might get out um you know sometime early 20s uh, you might be in and out of different jobs go back for a graduate degree and, and then by mid 20s you're trying to do something, launch some career based on your interests. Well, do you think that the same interests you have now are gonna be the same 40 years from now? Absolutely not. Uh, so just like if you're in, say you're in, I'm, I'm just taking a swag here, you're, at, you're in eighth grade. Well, I gotta believe that when you were in fourth grade or fifth grade, some of your interests were really different than where you are now. And all of your life experience between fourth grade and eighth grade is influencing what you want to pay attention to now. You know, well, that's the same once you get into this kind of 40 year career span, which might think might seem like a forever period of time, but it can be a really a fun time if you base your career decision making on uh, on as much on heart issues as well as head issues uh so on on your passion uh passion and purpose can help you you know when you think about 
what are your most exciting best days? What makes them a great day? Um, well, you start to see, well, what was I doing on that day that made it such a great day? Um, well, that can start to give you a tip about where to focus your career on, you know? Uh, so maybe it's that you are a, quote, people person. You like to be around groups and social and uh you know so having so if you're in business being a promoter being able to be an event planner or a promoter of of events and activities and opportunities uh, would probably be a great area to go in because of your interest in being around people and being able to influence and being able to be cure be able to be creative in shaping these events, you know, um, the on the on the other side, the non-market facing side is what we call the operating side or the operations side. So that is inside a company or employer, okay, um, and and being able to um, find an interest area that help helps to either design, develop, build, and deliver uh different goods and services so um you think about when you go to a supermarket and you see all kinds of they're mostly called consumer goods so soap toothpaste um you know food and so on well there's a company here in the united states in cincinnati ohio called uh procter and gamble they're one of the world's largest consumer goods products and in a number of continents around the world, when you go into a supermarket, some you know a grocery store, what have you, they'll have a certain percentage of consumer goods. You're looking for soap, you're looking for hair uh, hair products, hairspray, you know all kinds of combs, you know all this stuff. They're the company that makes all those consumer goods. That's called B 2 C, business to consumer that's different than B2B, business to business. Uh, like Boeing or Airbus is a B2B, they build airplanes and they sell them not to you. Mo most human beings don't have the capital or the money to buy an airplane. So they sell, their customer is another company. So it's called uh, like United Airlines or Swiss Air or whatever. So that's a B2B. When they, so a B2C, business to consumer, on the operating side would be, as an example, something like Procter & Gamble making uh, soap and soups and, you know, like they'll have, they, they are, they've actually partnered with Campbell Soup. Um, and so, but what they do is they sell a lot of consumer goods. Now to make that happen, they have factories and they have studios and they have other kinds of, of entities that help to, to design, develop, build, and deliver these consumable goods. Okay, so they what what do they need? Well, on the operating side, in terms of careers, they need people that know how to do um, product design. You know, think about uh, so. For example, I, I've been talking about soap. Well, do you know that for almost a hundred years, soap was only sold one way. But but for a hundred years, soap was only made in bars oh emma got that right emma guessed it so yeah, good yeah, job wow. emma. <laughs> yeah, yeah thank you emma yeah so for 100 years that's the only way that soap was made and sold now there was an inventor okay this is another business job there was an inventor that was very creative and was curious and was thinking you know i can't uh you know i can't handle a bar of soap i mean it slips out of my hand it falls on the floor it gets dirty i have to clean the bar of soap you know now i'm cleaning the soap and not cleaning me and 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 so there's so there has to be some better way of having a cleansing solution so he was the first one to after a hundred years to be able to melt down burn down the elements of a bar of soap and turn it into liquid soap. And then after that, it became spray soap. And then they had soap on, on, on a piece of paper, like say for camping. You know, if you're, you're out there in the woods, uh, you could just apply a little water from your canteen onto this paper 
and it would have so, a layer of soap on it, cleansing solution. So they, and it was from there that they then started uh, to, to use um, b- bottled soap, like say during the pandemic, you see all different flavors of cleansing solutions in different forms. Well, that came out of career jobs, like uh, product designers, um, you, you know, that, that would figure out, and they would listen to the marketeers who were internally uh, figuring out what our customer needs and customer trends, what will people spend money because on, because they like a, a different form or a new form in which to, to buy this service or product. Okay? So, so on the operating side, there are all these jobs that are more product and service facing versus market side where they're customer facing. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. So, um, so, so that is, uh, you know, if you look at two major buckets, um, that's, that, that's how to easily kind of stratify career opportunities in terms of whether it's on the operating side or market facing side. So if you like to analyze and to connect strategically different kinds of features and benefits of different uh, products, then probably the operating side is, is where you're going to go. And you might go to an engineering school, you might go to um, a design school. Uh, in fact, we have in the United States, we have several uh, design schools like Rhode Island School of Design. And about 90% of all those college students are studying how do you create a novel or new way of, of, of putting together uh, an offering. So there's uh, like, you look at cool sunglasses and like the trend on what kind of glasses you use for sports, for sunbathing, for just outside everyday apparel, uh, changes like every six months. And so from a design standpoint, a product design standpoint, they need to talk to the marketeers to really understand what is the latest trend. So someone might want to buy a pair of glasses to go to a rock concert uh, that that is has specialty branding or co-branding with the rock group, you know, and so they figure out a partnership licensing agreement and the glasses have some kind of cool image, color, brand, picture, whatever, either on the actual product on the glasses or in the or in the or in the packaging, um, and then they'll give it to a designer who will figure out how to make that happen. Um, so, those are um, you know just kind of tip the iceberg in terms of some some of the kinds of opportunities that that there are out there. Um, start with what, what I would um, like you to consider is to start with wh- where do you have fun? You know, what is it that, you know, you just like to do, whether, whether or not you'd ever get paid for it, what is it that really turns you on? That is the core of the initial good thinking about what to do and where to go. Okay. So, um, so, you know, we have a, a couple of, like we have uh, a teacher, uh, Tom, uh, Mr. Uh, Tom Sepec, uh, what was it Sepio? Se- I think Sepio, yeah. So like, yes, yeah. so he probably, I'm just going to guess that, you know, he has a love for being able to share a body of knowledge in a very attractive sticky way um, that will provide a gift of learning to young people. So you well, start, I, yeah. Well, Dr. Sullivan, uh, I, I, you know, I, I think you said it pretty perfectly. I do have a passion to teach. Uh, I've been doing it for 10 years. I, I, I love what I do for a living. Uh, I love building relationships with uh, the children that yeah. are in uh, my classroom. And yeah. more importantly, I want to give them the groundwork to succeed when they become older and yes, uh, that's great. You know, yes. build a foundation for them. 
So I, I agree. Yeah. With you. So what he did, what was real, what I love about that is, so he, as he described what he loves and why he likes that. So that's the what and the so what. Um, he was able to combine, you know, even something bigger, which was a mission or a cause around that. So his mission in teaching is to be able to give them, give you an opportunity, uh, you know, as a student to have the kinds of, of uh, tools to be successful in your life. And that that's a very rewarding kind of mission that will help him you know, over the years, because no matter what job you pick, no matter what career path you go, there's always ups and downs. And there's, there's going to be certain days where you say, oh, I'm just really bored. Why am I doing this? Or, or oh, boy. But then there's many other days where it's like, wow, I'm so lucky to be doing this. I can't believe I'm getting paid. You know, it's so rewarding. This is just really kick. And so you want to have the right expectations that it's not always, you're not always in la la land where everything is perfect, but that for the most part is the mission of the work that you're doing something that's noble and exciting and rewarding that will uh, propel you as you go through your days. You know, uh, what I, what I'd like to do is actually uh, Ralph, if uh, Mr. Krause, if it was all right with you, if we, Open it up for a little discussion. Yeah, absolutely. I had some questions. And guys, yeah. again, if you have any more questions, feel free to message them in the chat. Some of them I'll read. Some of them I'll, I'll unmute them. And uh, if yeah. I call on you, I'm just going to call your first name because, you know, we're recording yes. this. But uh, one of the kids wanted to know about passion and purpose. You had mentioned passion and yeah. purpose a few times. Yes. What was your passion and purpose? Why did you uh, go into the business world? Okay. That, that's a great question, really wonderful question. And by the way, that reflects a certain amount of curiosity and creativity on your part, which is important to know what are the things that make up who you are as a person. So whoever asked that was really was someone that has a lot of creative and curious energy, and that's important to know. Okay, so on my end, I love, so I'm an Irishman, Irishman. And I love being in front of people. Oh, yeah. I love being on a stage. And I actually thought of being in theater, you know, because I love play acting and plays. And, um, and, and, and but I was really influenced in high school by this teacher who was kind of like that. He was my history teacher. And he acted out uh, like the, the, uh, the World War II. And he would have different scenes and he brought the whole history of the war to life. He himself, Bernich, I started to look for people kind of jobs because I love being in front of people. Okay. Um, and, but there's a lot of different, very different jobs that are people facing, but then I had to look more deeply. So what is it about being in front of people that is either rewarding or exciting? Well, I found that there are certain jobs where you can give something back to young people and it will be um, a real gift to them. And also you feel good about giving it to them. So one of those jobs was the teacher. So I started off my uh, way back being an inner city high school teacher. That was my first, very, very first job. Now I've had a lot of different jobs. Like one, one, one job was um, being an insurance salesman. Now that you're in front of people, you're, you're selling a product, um, but it's a very different space. So what I'm saying is you have to get more clear and be open to yourself in terms of what is it about the initial area that you want. So if you say, I like numbers, I'm really good at math. Uh, and, you know, I'm a, I'm a quant jock, quantitative a quant jock, you know, you're, um, that's a start. That's not a finish. That's, so when you're trying to tap into passion and translate that into some kind of an actionable job or opportunity or career, you have to ask some follow-on questions about your passion. You know, so if you like numbers, what is it that would uh, be the setting that you would like to use numbers? So would you like to use numbers when you're trying to uh, develop 
uh, a formula. So you're, you want to be a theorist. Do you want to teach numbers like in a classroom? Do you want to apply numbers for product design and for development? If you're working for NASA, they hire a lot of people that love numbers and that are very good with numbers. And, but they're, they're usually in the form of being an engineer because engineers are really good with numbers. So you have to start to think what would be different settings that I could apply this love or this passion that would meet, help others, but also uh, be exciting for me. I don't know if this is, is this helpful? Hopefully. Um, oh yeah, no, absolutely. Um, we'll get through a couple more student questions and then and then we'll let you go if that's yeah. all right. Yeah. One of the yeah. students wants to know, could you talk about the college process um, for international students for attending a, a, a university like a University of Ohio State or Ohio State University? And right. you know, I guess for this purpose, because we also have domestic, what what would it be for domestic versus international students to attend sure. Uh, sure. OSU? So there is about 30% of the, so all, Ohio State University, OSU, which is uh, officially located in the U.S. state of Ohio, is, has 66,000 students that are on a day-to-day -day basis that are active full-time students. That's a lot. That's a lot of students. Now, out of that, roughly 20% are international students. So that's a huge number. 20% of 66,000 are from other countries. They're, um, they're mostly from either Europe or, or Asia. Okay? Um, we get a few from South Africa and from Brazil and places like that, but most of them are from probably where, you know, on your continent where you live or from Asia. Um, they have, um, a couple of extra things they have to do aside from the standard when you apply to um, a typical American college, there is usually grades. There's um, some kind of an essay that you have to write that says, why do you want to go there? Um, and there are uh, uh, letters of recommendation. So two or three people that need to write a letter that says you're, you're a good person for these reasons. Um, and, and, but if you're from another country, you also usually have to take a test that documents that you can speak English because um, in, in, in America, most major schools, including what's called a Big Ten school like Ohio, uh, absolutely requires that you, you're fluent. Um, so you're not just learning English, but you're fluent and you've passed, there are certain, uh, language exams and you have to take one of the standard language exams to to prove that uh, that that is now what some international students have done to get into ohio state is they will sometimes take their first two years in what's referred to in this system this college higher ed system in the united states which is a little different than in europe um, they go to what's called a community college and they will learn uh, where the standards are a little bit less so and and they will learn more about the language and also about the culture uh, for those first year or two year period and then they can often transfer their uh, college credits uh, to a big school so so we have uh, usually reciprocal agreements or partnership arrangements between community colleges and uh, colleges and universities where you can transfer at least some or all of your credits. So um, it sounds like there's a, a lot of different avenues that, that kids can take um, yes. depending on where they're at. Uh, we have a yeah. question from uh, Lucrezia in Italy and Lucrezia you had an awesome question you should be able to unmute to ask. Yeah uh, I only would like to know on a scale of one to 10, uh, how much would you think that your work, your job is creative, like? I'm sorry, on a one to 10, how much is my job what? How creative do you have to be in your day to day? In my job, um, it's about a nine. Um, uh, it's really high because I, so I, at the moment, I'm a business school professor. So I'm teacher, I'm an educator. 
uh, like Mr. Sepio. Uh, so I'm teaching for part of my job. For another part of the job, I'm, I'm a book author. And so, um, and so a lot of my writing is uh, really creative. And I interview a lot of people. So I have to be as when I'm interviewing for the book, I'm interviewing, I, I've interviewed 100 people. And so I have to be really creative about how to write a very sticky, interesting, compelling story in a short period of time. You know? And so that's really creative. And then I'm also uh, asked, as some professors are asked, to do uh, public lectures or to give, I, I give motivational speaking engagements to companies. And uh, you need to be really creative in terms of shape-shifting your stories and your message in a way that's relevant for them from where they're coming from. So you have to be very much uh, attentive to well, what is their world and what would be interesting for them. And so how you can't work up yourself and what you like and what you want all the time. You have to kind of think about them. So that, that's why there's such a high degree. Uh, and I believe te a good teacher is very creative uh, at any level. I think we share a lot of the same things. Like, So Mr. Sepio has to think about how does he create a hook up front, captivate your interest, get you to stop thinking about all these other things and focus on this. And then how does he, you know, he has to think about how does he sustain that interest in a meaningful way to keep you to grow and go in your insights and your knowledge. And uh, if, if it was just a rote, more of the same kind of mechanical thing, you'd lose interest and you'd be just, it'd be like a so-so class. So your best classes are very creative experiences. No. Um, so I don't know if that's hopefully that's helpful. No, that's good. And we actually speak. Uh, speaking of which, uh, we have Mr. Sepio who's who's next. So Mr. Sepio, you had your comment and question. Yes, uh, Dr. Sullivan, uh, thank you for the great transition and uh, the great compliment. Uh, I did just finish up a, a finance course with uh, my eighth graders in uh, Nevada. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, and uh, wow. one, of their, one of their projects was a. Uh, what we call a Shark Tank project, which is a television oh. show in uh, America, where yeah. uh, people have to create a, you know, a business model, a business plan. And, you know, uh, usually I have the kids when we are in person, you know, we, you know, the, the, the kids are in groups and, you know, they're creating a project and, uh, you know, they do a presentation and I'm actually the shark, you know, I, they have to <laughs> on, uh, on the project. Wow. Yeah. So, um, uh, Dr. Sullivan, uh, this year, what I did was I did a virtual one and everyone had to create a Google slide. And I have to tell you, um, the creativity of these eighth graders is, is amazing. Like it, what I wanted to focus on is what you said about, you know, once they're focused on, on a project, they're ready to go, you know? So my question to you is uh, from, as a business professor, what advice would you give these future entrepreneurs or business owners or whoever they are? Uh, what advice would you give them uh, as they're progressing through their adolescent teenage years and through high school and college? Uh, that's a great question there, sir. Uh, uh, I, I would say that if you could start early with some experiments, entrepreneurial experiments, little, little things that matter. So think about like a summer project. If you're trying to um, uh, say, say um, starting a lawn care business and think about what would be special. There's a lot of lawn care companies and businesses around. What could you do that's different that would cause people to um, wanna hire you? And then how would you do that? I'm just using this as an example, but um, if, if you can think of something that you can do um, and package it up during the summertime as something you'd like to sell and see if you get people to pay money for it, um, you're going to learn a lot from that experience, whatever, whatever it is that you're trying to bring to market, if you will. And there's usually either a product or a service. Uh, so a service might be cleaning or babysitting. You know, 
if you uh, if you like to babysit, you might be able to come up with like a home care business where you have you you have you have your friends who you trust to be some of the babysitters, and you market your service in some unique way that you get. Um, maybe you uh, can can deliver great babysitting services cheaper than anyone or better that you know more quality or this or that so i the point is the one point that i'm trying to make is start early picture something very concrete that you could do in fashion uh in an attractive way and try it out price it and try it out over the summertime and see what happens